Hello drummers, it's me Rob Lynn here from drumsaword.com giving you a full song video drum lesson for free. This song was suggested over on my Facebook page, it is the season of giving, so I want to show you how to play the classic Do They Know It's Christmas by Band Aid from the 80s, not the latest version, drummed of course by the legend Phil Collins. And this is a great song for me to teach because it allows me to sort of talk about different, uh, different, different ways you can play the same thing, and we're going to go over that as, as, as we get to it. But before we do, don't forget you can download, or I should tell you, you can download the free PDF that comes with this lesson, the fully transcribed chart, every single note um, from the website is linked beneath this video. So have that printed out in front of you as we go through this lesson, it's really going to help. So we've got the first part, and I've written here the tempo 115 BPM, the intro tom toms in brackets. So we're on the toms here. And note, this has been transcribed for a three tom setup. So right from the start, I'm going to um, lay my cards on the table. I could have used four toms for this. I think Phil has five or six toms, but most drummers don't have that many toms. Most drummers only have three or even two toms. So I want, what I wanted to do for this lesson was to transcribe it for three toms. The rhythms on the drums are here, but it's, it's, it's not necessarily being spread out amongst the large number of toms that Phil had on the recording. I've put them on three toms. So there's a little bit of um, salt to be taken with this. When you're uh, playing along or reading this yourself, feel free to extend the drum fills to four toms, five toms, or reduce them if you've only got two toms. Feel free to do what you need to do to be able to play it on your kit. But it does start off with just three toms, and I've written it as flams, even though they're not really on the recording, but because it's like this echo effect being added, really dramatic, doom, doom, doom. It sounds better if you haven't got an effect like that, if you play them as flams. So that's what I'm playing here, even though I think on the recording it's just single strokes. But we start on the floor tom, lowest tom, we get uh, one and two, and then up to your highest tom, one and two, and the end of two there, and then this is on beat four. So we get one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. If you want to give it more power, you could play with the bass drum. You don't hear it on the recording, it's just the toms. Okay, so we play that. I've written the first four bars, and I've written for the fifth bar, note lyrics enter, so you know roughly where you are. We've got four bar drum intro. That tom um, pattern continues for another four bars. The next line is uh, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten bars long, so be aware of that. It comes in a little bit earlier than you expect, the verse one with the drums. Um, so we've got to, you just, you just gotta be, no, you just, you just gotta know the song or count the number of bars. But you know when it's about to come in, for Christmas time, that's when we come in with verse one. So, as I mentioned at the beginning of this lesson, um, there's different ways you can play this. I've, I've, I've watched a few covers online, it's interesting to see how other drummers hear it. We've also got the recording on uh, YouTube I found to Phil Collins actually in the studio, but I can guarantee you the, the, rec the, the version he, you see him play isn't the version you hear on the recording. Um, the version you hear on the recording is a lot simpler. Phil Collins is playing a lot of bass drum stuff. On the recording, it's very basic. You still hear the hi-hat and ghost notes though. So basically, this is the basic rhythm that you hear on the recording. I'm trying to copy the recording as much as possible, but then we'll talk about variations. We get one and a two and a three and a four. It's this fast hi-hat pattern. So you've really got to have your, your wrist and, and stick technique and finger technique down in order to play loosely. You don't want to be scripting that stick too tight because this is a three, four minute song. You're going to fall apart by the end. If you really can't keep that up for the whole song, and I would struggle to keep up for the whole song, then feel free to throw in the occasional eighth note. Use the open hi-hat as an excuse to, to break it up. Stuff like that. Any, any little cheats that lay to be able to play this all the way through. But Phil, I'm pretty sure, plays it all the way through. Um, and we get, ignore the crash symbol on the first bar of verse one for now, because that kind of throws off the pattern. Let's go to the second bar of that first line of verse one. That's the drum beat that gets repeated. So we get these ghost notes falling in between the gaps the hi-hats are leaving. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. That's what those little snare drum notes in brackets are the ghost notes, they're played as a little tap note with the left hand. But then of course we've also got the back beat falling on beats two and four, so we get this pattern. A really good fun, cool um, ghost note drum beat to learn 
anyway, but this is what he's playing on the recording. Then we add in the bass drums on beats one, three. If you really can't play those ghost notes properly, quietly in other words, leave them out completely. What you don't want to hear is this. Not what's, that's not what you're hearing on the recording, it's... Lovely, there's a sort of natural uh, accent on the and each time. Is there? Yeah, I'm sort of hearing da-da, 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 just where the, the motion works with the hand. So that's what I'm hearing on the recording. Another way you could play it is just four on the floor, put the bass drum through all the way through. I'm pretty sure you don't hear a bass drum on beats two and four, but that would work as well. What you hear Phil play on the recording on the YouTube video, which again, is not what he's playing on the recording, it's kind of like this. I'm putting an extra bass drum in there on the uh of beat one and the uh of beat three, just before the snare drum back beat on two and four, and an extra bass drum on the and of two and the and of four. So we've got this one, a two, and three, a four, and one. But while maintaining the ghost notes and this right hand pattern, if you want to play exactly like Phil. That's a lot of fun to play as well, and of course you can play that. That sounds just as good. The other version um, I hear Plick Drummers play, and it almost sounded like this in the recording, but I'm pretty sure it wasn't, was um, one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and one. Yeah, playing and one at the end of each bar. Sort of resolving each bar with an and one. And that sounds cool as well, but again, I don't think you hear that in the recording. So then to simplify it, if this is way too much, and believe me, for, for most uh, new drummers, if you haven't been playing for a couple of years, at this tempo for a whole song, no, 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 it, it's, it's way too tricky. So we need to simplify it for, 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 for newbie drummers, drummers haven't got that technique down yet. There's nothing wrong with that, it's a complicated technique to learn. So just play eighth notes instead, really simple. There's your basic rock beat for the whole song. If you really can't play any of these variations, then it could just be this, or four on the floor, or put the bass drum in on the uh each time. Or um, one, two, three, four, and one. Throw in ghost notes if you feel comfortable. So I'm playing eighth notes here, and I'm just filling in all the gaps with the left hand as ghost notes, including that two E and four E. The bass drum on the uh there was just replacing one of those ghost notes. Um. So have fun with the ghost note pans. Don't worry about it too much. It's not essential for the song. What's important is you, you sort of get this feel. And of course you could also play it double hand, I guess. Nothing wrong with that either. One and a two and a three and a four. Right, left, right, right, left, right, coming down to the snare drum for beats two and four. So lots of different ways you can play this. I've chosen to, to make it sound like the recording as much as possible, but all those variations are equally as valid. Feel free to play any of them. No one's gonna judge you on that whatsoever. Well, they shouldn't. So, um, there you go, there's all the variations. So we start off with verse one and we go into a crash symbol. And what, what I want to skip that bar for is because I've written it as a ghost note straight afterwards. But when you're playing this song up to speed, um, you don't have to rush back to the hi-hats, and you don't have to play that ghost note on the E of one, because no one can really hear it anyway, because that crash cymbal's ringing out. So what most drummers do, including myself, they hit the crash cymbal on the one, and then come down to the hi-hat for two. So I'm leaving out the E and uh, as written on the chart, I'm leaving out that little bit there, and just coming down to the hi-hat for beat two. It's giving, it's giving me a bit more time for the right hand to come down to the hi-hat, there's no need to rush, also, you, your right hand probably wants a little bit of a rest occasionally, and those crash cymbals are a good a chance for your right hand to get a little bit of rest just for a quarter of a beat, quarter of a bar. But notice that I've written it as 
you probably didn't hear the difference there. I, was, I played the extra ghost note and the extra hi-hat notes there, one over the other. So I've written it as this, but you could play and come in on beat two instead. So then verse one, we've got two bars at the top of the, at the top of the line and then eight bars of repeat for those next two lines and nothing to talk about there. Then we go on to pre-chorus one, I've called it. Brackets hi-hat, so it's all oh, hi-hat this song. Um, and we just got four more bars of the groove, as you can see. The next line, however, we've got some stuff going on. Our first drum fills, really. So the first bar is just a standard bar of groove. The second bar, notice how um, we get the hi-hat opening on the one, one and, and it was really hard to hear on the recording. Um, it's almost like he comes in on the E of beat two, just after beat two with the snare drum. So I've written it as coming down on beat two, because this is how I would play it, but as a ghost note instead, so it's really, really quiet. But don't worry about that too much. Coming on beat two, as I've shown you, but on the recording, notice it's kind of a little bit offbeat. It sounds like he's coming in on the E, but I'm pretty sure he starts on two, because it's a weird place to start, but you just can't, you can just can't hear it in the mix because it's played so quietly because he starts so quietly and builds up. Hence where we got the, the hairpin, the crescendo at the bottom there showing that it's getting louder. The bass drum underneath is pumping eighth notes. That's optional. So we just basically get this. Two B and a three E and a four E and a one. With the high at the beginning, one and, one and two E and a three E and a four E and a one. Let's put it, put it in context with a groove before. And a in fact, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back a step. A step. Um, this is why you're doing these lessons, is I want to show you what, what we've got up to speed so far. So, uh, forgive me, we're at pre-chorus one second line, but I'm going to go back to the beginning. I'm going to play you um, uh, eight bars of the tom groove, going into a few bars of the, the actual verse groove, so you can hear what that sounds like without a microphone on and just the drums, so you can you know, hear it in context. Then we'll come back to where I just left off. So, here's what that sounds like up to speed. So back to the second line of pre-chorus one and that bar again, second bar, one and two E and a B E and a four E and a in context with a groove. And I'll play it up to speed the second as well, but that's that second bar. The third bar, back to the main groove. And again, use all these tricks that I've, I talked about at the beginning of this lesson. Don't feel you have to rush back to the hi-hat after the crash symbol on one. Don't feel you have to play this every single time. When you've got an open hi-hat, for example, at the end of bar one, bar one there on that second line, you might play 40 and, instead of 40 and a one and, 40 and a one and, you might play 40 and one and. Just give yourself a little bit, a little bit of a break there before the drum fill. So the third bar, crash symbol on beat one, Notice how we get four and at the end of that third bar. Four and then Phil closes the hi-hat for the fourth bar as he goes into our first varied drum fill. And again, I've written this for three toms, although I'm pretty sure he uses four or five in this drum fill. So we get this rhythm. This is the rhythm that stands out in your ear. I'm gonna talk about the stuff in between in a second. So this is what pops out in your ear. We get this rhythm. One E and two, one E and a two, and a three E and four. 4E e and a, uh, see how, how I move around the drums there. 1E e and 2 and a, uh, and a uh, 3E e and down the drums, and a uh, 3E e and 4E e and a. Uh, last four notes on the lowest tom. And then don't miss the rhythm like that. So what I want to add to that is the fact that it's very hard to hear exactly what he's playing underneath it. He could be playing something like, where I, 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 that's not quite the rhythm I played you a second ago, but you can hear that there were some ghost notes going on in there, including on the toms, which are just too hard to hear on the recording. I didn't want to give you ghost notes that aren't there just because I'm presuming they would be, and you can sort of feel them in the background. I wanted to show you the, the skeleton rhythm 
that you hear, it's basic. And then if you want to start improvising, then please do, because that's what makes a drummer unique is their ability to take a drum fill and add in their own little spice, a drum beat, add in their own little spice. That's what makes it sound like you. Um, but uh, like I said, last time I mentioned it, uh, and all these drum fills are the same. There's definitely extra stuff going on in the background, but it's just too quiet in the mix for me to tell you. And I did want to give you stuff that isn't there. So there's the basic rhythm. Feel free to throw in for the more advanced drummers, throw in some ghost notes around the toms and play around with the rhythms. I, I, I insist, if you're trying to read this note for note all the way through, Great, good for you. It's good fun to have a go at doing that. But if you're playing it with your band or in your bedroom for fun, or to an audience, they're not going to hear that drum fill go, that's not what Phil played on that bar four or second verse. You know, feel free to improvise is what I'm saying. Okay, so let's hear that line, those four bars. Second line, the pre-chorus one, played up to speed because uh, we've got two cool drum fills there. Here we go, here's what that sounds like. So then on to verse two, and, and we've got just four more bars uh, of the first line of groove. Uh, notice the open hi-hat at the end of the fourth bar. And one, we don't get and one, it's and one. You get a little open hi-hat there on the end of, of beat four. Then on to the second line, and let's go straight to the fourth bar because we've got these cool hi-hat openings. And I'm pretty sure he, he'd be playing it like this. He won't be playing, well, I'll show you. One E and a two E and a three and four and one and two. Kind of turns into like an offbeat sort of hi-hat thing um, where he's not playing the hi-hat on three and four. He's playing three and four and, and then as you notice, hopefully, as I went into the next line, pre-chorus one, he continues that drum fill, which he uses this technique later where you extend the drum fill over into bar one of the next bar, which is a really cool idea. And I, I love doing that kind of stuff as well. You extend it a little bit further than, than you expect, but still maintain that back beat on two and four. So this is how I think he played it on the recording. Again, it's too low in the mix for me to hear exactly. One E and a two E and a three and four and one and two and a three E and a four. And then it continues into pre-chorus one. Let's try and play bars three and four verse two there, the second line. That was naturally throwing in some little ghost notes there. Thanks like a disco beat there. Ghost notes are optional, they're not essential, they're from more advanced drummers. And the more advanced drummer doesn't need to, for me to explain where to play them because they've, they've got them, it's like a thing they've learned already. But yeah, feel free to improvise with ghost notes. I shouldn't mention this too often because people are getting bored of hearing that now. So then we've got pre-chorus one. Four more bars of groove, but notice the first bar, we've got that continuation of the open hi-hat there on, on the end of one. Leave out that kind of stuff if you find it too difficult. On to page two, pre-chorus one continued. First bar, um, we've got the four and at the end. Four and, two open hi-hat notes, four and. It then closes into the second bar where, again, this is the skeleton rhythm I heard, and we won't go over it again, but you can fill in ghost notes. We get one E and, two E and, three and, four E and. Uh, if I was using four toms, one E and, two E and, three go all down the drums like that, but if there are only three toms, I decided to make the three and on the same tom. But it could be uh, if you've got more toms, if you want to play it that way. So we get one E and a two E and a three E and a four and one E and two E and three and four E and a one. Next line, we're going to chorus one and it's just a little tease of the chorus, two bars of it before we go to a bridge. So the first bar, groove. Second bar, we have this drum fill starting halfway through the bar. One E and a two E and. It's a lovely little drum fill, this, very simple. And this is, I'm sure, because you can hear it very clearly, this is exactly what he plays. He plays this. Three E and a four and a. So I should say that as well. Some of these drum fills, I definitely know he played it exactly, and this is one of them. Three E and a four and a one. Lovely little grouping of notes there going down the toms. So with the bar, I'll play up to speed in a second. Into bridge, I've called the bridge. And um, 
I'm gonna, show you, I'm gonna show you what you hear on the recording, then I'm also gonna talk about some variations because if I was playing this with my band or in my bedroom, I would definitely involve the writing which we're about to see. But you don't hear, it's very, very minimalistic. This is what you hear on the recording. One and two, so it's like a half time thing now where the snare drum goes to beat three of each bar. We don't get two and four, so it, it sounds like it's slowed down, but it hasn't, it's just the back beat has gone from beat two and four to just beat three. It's a, called a half time drum beat. So we get one and two and three and four and. So we get this four and on the hi hats. One and two and three and four and. Next bar, one and two, one and two. You can use one crash symbol, feel free to use two if you want to. One and two and three. One and two and three. I just naturally want to move to a different crash to give it a bit more effect. And three, four and. Then straight into the third bar, which is exactly the same as the second bar. One and two and three, four and. Fourth bar is very similar. One and two and three, four and one. We get an and, a bass drum on the and of four there. Four and one. The next line, we get one, two and three, four. So that's playing quarter notes on the hi-hat. Notice it's open on two, three, and four. Hence the little O above each hi-hat, that means open hi-hat. One, two, and three, four. Then into our drum fill before the chorus two. And again, this is the skeleton rhythm you hear. One E and a two E and a three E and. And I think I heard a flam on the floor, Tom. Four E and a, and that's the sticking I used to play it. A left hand flam followed by a left, it's like a flam tap. It is a flam tap, a left hand flam tap. If you use that sticking, you come out correctly with the right hand. So we get one E, two E, three E, and four E, and a one. If you can't play that flam tap thing, just play at the end, that's absolutely fine. So, let's now play that up to speed for you. I'm gonna start from the top of the page, Hold the pre-chorus one continue to last the first two bars of the page. Hold the chorus one, the whole of the bridge into chorus two a little bit. So again, we can hear that up to speed. So then to chorus two, um, and uh, first two bars we've got groove, the second bar, uh, line we've got two more bars of groove, but then the second bar of that second line, halfway through we've got this um, very, uh, for me, uh, I look forward to this drum for every time I listen to this song, it's just, uh, it's just brilliant. It takes what I talked about a second ago where it goes over the bar line, um, uh, but yeah, I'll just show you, it's, it's a lovely little drum fill this. We get one E and a two E, uh, and it's open on the and of two there, and comes down to the snare drum, Three E and, closes on three, three E and, same with four E and, four E and, and again with one E and into the next bar. One E and. And feel free to put the bass drums on the ands there with the open hi-hats or on the three and four. Very hard to hear on the mix. So I haven't included any bass drums. That's the basic idea. But if you want to put in your own bass drums where it feels comfortable, feel free to. But we get this. One E and, a two E and, three E and, four E and, one E and, two E and, a three E and, a four E. I'll play up to speed in a second. A little bit faster now though. I just love that. It just it goes over the bar line. Love your drum fill. Very simple though. So then we go on to the third line, more groove. Uh, fourth, the last line, we've got a drum fill at the end of the second bar. One E and a two E and, and I think you hear this, three E and, snare, snare, high tom, and then down the toms. That rhythm, with the open hi-hat before. One E and a two E and, three E and, four E and a one. So now let's play those last three lines of chorus two up to speed, here we go. So then for the last page, we've got the, um, the outro, 
Um, and these were the hardest drum fills to hear exactly what Phil was playing because all the vocals over the top now have all come in and the drums have been put right back to the back of the mix as they should be. So uh, these, some of these drum fills are probably going to be, you'll, you'll probably hear something different to me. It's just the way it goes. Um, but yeah, anyway, I've explained that already. So let's just go through each one how I think, what, what I think is being played. So each line has a drum fill at the end of it with a crash cymbal at the beginning. Yeah, apart from one line, which we'll get to in a second. So first line, crash cymbal at the beginning. The drum fill at the end is just 40 under, I believe. It could be on the floor, Tom. It's really hard to hear. But it's 40 under one, the end of the first line. Then going into the second line, notice how we get one and two. E. He throws in a secret little open hi-hat there on the end of one. So if you want to copy note for note, get ready with that open hi-hat on the end of beat one of line two. End of that line, we get one E and a two E and three E and four E and. I don't think it's four E and a, I thought it was just four E and, but it could be that. But it's the same drum fill as we went over at the end of second page. Instead of. So then third line, the drum fill at the end, we get. Same as the second page. That drum fill. Fourth line. Um, notice the end of bar three, we got two open hi-hats. He does that again. Going into the uh, drum fill bar, we get one E and two, and uh, three E and four E and. Uh, again, last time I mentioned it, it's been written for three toms here. One E and two, one E and two, and uh, three E and four E and one. Yeah, try and get this right for you. No, one E and two, and a three E and four E and a. Again, when you're not putting the ghost notes in, there's lots and lots of space there. Um, uh, so, so feel free to improvise and put some ghost notes in there and change the, the rhythms around. But that's, what, that's what sticks out on the recording. One, two, three, four, fifth line. Uh, the drum foot with the end of that line, very similar. We get the open hi-hat just before the end of bar three. One E and two, and a three E and a four E and a. I think he plays and a uh, onto the snare drum. And a four E and a one, two and a three E and a four E and a one. One E and two, and a three E and a four E and a one. And that uh on the E of the uh of three on the snare drum is probably played a little bit quieter than I played it. It should be like a ghost note or building up in volume towards the end of the bar. That sort of effect. Like that. So then the next line, um, we've got um, my favorite drum fill again at the end. Except he doesn't go in, continue it into the next line. And notice how I, did, how I did write a bass drum on beat three there underneath the snare drum. You can choose to play that or leave it out. One E and a two E and three E and four E and one E and a two. So he doesn't extend it over the bar this time, he closes it on beat one of the next line. Then that next line, notice it doesn't start with a crash cymbal. I didn't hear one on the recording, and there's no drum fill at the end of that line. So he's like holding back a little bit now for the last two lines. The next, second to last line, the drum fill at the end is a cool one. It really stands out in, uh, in the recording because it's starting to fade out. The drums start to come a little bit louder, and you can hear the, the melody of the toms he's playing. He plays this, I believe. One E and two and a three. Yeah, you get this right. And a three E and, that's it. So, excuse me. One E and two and a three E and. It's that bit there, E and, get rid of that. E and, and then four E and a. Uh, it goes up the toms, up the toms like that. But you could play four E and a uh, on your two lowest toms. But we get this. One E and two and a three E and four E and a. Uh, that's what stands out. Um, one, two, and a three, and four, and a one. Again, fill in ghost notes if you like. So then fade out, the last line I've written here, note fade out, so you, you really start to, the song starts to really fade out now. Uh, and our last drum fill before it goes completely silent, and it's really hard to hear this one. I think he plays this rhythm. One E, and a two E, and, and then three E, a four, and a. That grouping again, just all on the snare drum. Before we had the, before the um, break section, it's the same drum fill we just played on the snare drum. 
could be completely wrong with that one. So, there you go. Um, that last section is pretty crazy. Um, you're gonna want to uh, improvise with your drum fills a lot, I think, uh, but don't uh, make them too long. Don't make them sound too different to the recording. Use those kind of rhythms. To make it sound like the recording, but feel free to improvise with any toms you like. Um, and uh, yeah, also don't forget to download the free PDF that came with this lesson. If you've got any questions about that, feel free to email me, robertdrumstheword.com. You can go over to my Facebook page, and at the moment I'm currently asking for song suggestions. There's a big post at the top of the page, so please put your song suggestions in there. Again, this was suggested on that page. Um, and uh, the rest of this week before Christmas, I'm probably going to do a few more free lessons, so you can check me out later in the week as well. Um, and I hope you have fun, um, and uh, yeah, I'll see you soon. Toodle pip, and happy drumming to you.